Ah, coffee in the morning. It's the best, best feeling. What is going on guys? And welcome back to a new Luma Fusion video. And as you might have seen in the title, this video is all about the brand new update 2.2. So Luma Touch just released Luma Fusion's update 2.2, and this comes with the brand new feature XML export over to Final Cut Pro from the Luma Fusion app. And also, if you're new to this channel, make sure to check out that subscribe button. That would be highly appreciated if you clicked on that. And in this video, I'm going to show you some of the key features which you might not know about, and this is something that you might want to consider before you actually purchase the XML export package, which is an in-app purchase inside of LumaFusion. And I'm going to show you exactly how you do that, where you find the information and also one more update, which they have put into LumaFusion. And this update is the one that I like the most. This is a minor update. It will not make you a better video editor or filmmaker, but it's really something that I find catchy and it kind of improves the overall feel in some way. You are now available, you are now able to customize even more inside of a Luma Fusion, which is so with that said, let's just jump over to the overhead shot so you can look down on the iPad here while I go through the different things of the XML export package, which you can buy inside of LumaFusion. It's 20 bucks and I'm going to go through all of that inside uh, the uh, iPad as well here. So you can see exactly what you will get when you transfer your footage from the iPad over to your Mac. So once we get over to LumaFusion here, let's uh, first start with the uh, minor update to uh, the LumaFusion 2.2 update, and that is the destination selection. And you can find the destination selections on both the share button and on the uh, top uh, left corner, which is source. So let's first start with the source here. So what you do is to tap on source and then you will see a new feature added. And this is add slash edit sources. So once we tap on that, you will see that we have available and in use. The in use features like photos, files, imported titles and transitions are the one that you see here once we tap on source. If you want to change this, you go over and you tap on the uh, edit, add sources, and you're now able to customize this layout. So let's say that you want to use Storyblocks and Storyblocks is something that you use quite a lot. You can simply tap on the three lines here and you can drag this over to in use. And you can also place it wherever you want to place it here. If you want to have it on top, you can place it on top. If you want to have it at the bottom, you place it on the bottom. So now once we go out to the uh, timeline here again and we tap on source on the top left corner, you will see that Storyblocks is now added on the bottom here. And uh, since I'm not using Storyblocks, I don't really need to have it on the sources and as a quick access tool. So I'm going to go over to edit sources again. Then I'm going to take the Storyblocks and drag it back to available. So the available features here are those that you can drag over to in use to make them visible under sources. Now moving over to the export button here, you have the same options once you tap on movie. So once you want to export your movie, you can tap on movie and here you can see that I have only selected photos, YouTube and files folder because these are the only kind of key features that I'm using with the LumaFusion exporting. Going over to add edit destinations here, you can see that you also have the option to add Vimeo, Dropbox, Google Drive, and anything like that. And you can simply just tap on the lines here, the three lines, and you can drag it over to in use, and you will now be able to export to Google Drive and WD Drive here. So once we go over to the export button one more time and then movie, you now see that we have added Google Drive and the WD Drive here. This brand new feature is something that I really, really enjoy because it allows you to customize more within LumaFusion. And we might see a lot more like this in the future as well, where we have a lot more and a lot of different things that we can customize. So I'm really impressed and I'm very excited about LumaTouch actually adding something like this to their LumaFusion app to make you able to customize a little bit more within the app. But the key feature to 
LumaFusion 2.2 is of course the XML export over to the Mac and Final Cut Pro. And you can simply find this by tapping on the export button and then you will see XML project package. Tap on that and you will be able to export from LumaFusion to Final Cut Pro. This is costing $20 as of today and might be increased when they add new features to this as well. And as I mentioned features, let's go over and talk about what you get when you are transferring this over to your MacBook and to Final Cut Pro. Pro. So once we move over to uh, the website of LumaTouch and LumaFusion, you can see the key features which you will get when you are transferring over to your Final Cut Pro on your MacBook. And on the left hand side here, you can see the LumaFusion area. In the middle, you can see the different type of features which is transferred or not. And on the right hand side here, you can see what is supported on the transfer between LumaFusion and Final Final Cut Pro. Now let's start from the top here, timeline. Multi-track timeline with audio, photos and videos. Yes, that will be transferred over to Final Cut Pro and that means all the video files and audio files that you have on the 12 track within LumaFusion will be exported over to Final Cut Pro and to your MacBook. The same goes with uh, the basic uh, transitions, which you can find inside of LumaFusion. Another thing is the video cut and audio crossfade and the fade in, fade out is transferred over to uh, Final Cut Pro, but you will have to do some changes. And we're gonna come back to those changes in just a sec. Now, moving over to the next one here, which is Timeline Mixer. You should not worry about this at all, because if you want to do that, you rather do that in Final Cut Pro. And the same with the Timeline Track here, View, Lock and Mute is not supported and that means if you are muting any of the files here or if you are locking them or if you are not viewing any of them this will not be transferred over to Final Cut Pro. Now moving to Frame and Fit here, which is underneath a mirror. If you're mirroring something within Frame and Fit, that will not follow over to uh, Final Cut Pro. The same with 90 degree rotate and also fit mode, which is focus and stretch. But fit mode, fit and fill will transfer over to your Final Cut Pro. Now moving down here, you will see basic cropping and keyframes. So basic cropping with the keyframes of the crop will follow over to Final Cut Pro. But if you add edge softness and corner radius, to that, that will not be a part of the transfer over to Final Cut Pro, which is really a bummer because that means you will have to mainly add the cropping in Final Cut Pro rather than doing that in LumaFusion for your export. And moving further down, you have the uh, basic size, positioning, rotate and keyframes is following and the blending opacity is uh, following over with the transfer, but moving down to blending and blend modes, none of the blend modes are actually following the uh, transfer from LumaFusion over to Final Cut Pro. And this is really a downside because if you are doing a lot of blend modes and uh, make uh, transitions with the blend modes and you're gonna export that over to Final Cut Pro, you will have to redo this because it's not following the process of the transfer from LumaFusion to Final Cut Pro which is really something that I would like to see, but this might be added in the future as a future update of the XML transfer. Now let's just go down here to the bottom where we have color and effects. Color correction and effects, no, LUTs, no, and chroma key, no. That means that if you have a transition using chroma key, you will not have that transition when you are moving the project over to Final Cut Pro. And the same goes with the LUTs you apply in LumaFusion, those will not follow over to Final Cut Pro either. And the same with color correction and effects. But the main thing when you want to export this over to Final Cut Pro is that you want to uh, color grade it in Final Cut Pro rather than doing that in LumaFusion. So that leaves us with some of the key features from color and effects not following the transfer from LumaFusion over to Final Cut Pro, which could be a downside for a lot of people. For me, uh, this uh, LUT part is basically something that I would do in Final Cut Pro rather than LumaFusion. And the same with the chroma key, you have more control when you do it on the Final Cut Pro. So that is also something that you might consider doing there instead. Now moving down to the pictures here. You can see here that this is a picture from uh, uh, LumaFusion and it has some uh, audio cross dissolve here. 
and uh, once you move that over to uh, Final Cut Pro, it will look like this. And that basically means that you don't have the audio crossfades here, which you have in LumaFusion. You don't get those over with, uh, with the transfer over to Final Cut Pro. But the thing you have to do is to actually detach the audio from the video files. And detaching the audio from the video files will overlap the audio files just like seen in this picture. And that will also automatically add keyframes to the audio. So it kind of illustrates that the audio crossfade that you applied to Luma Fusion. You can also find all of the information here on the website from Luma Touch and everything that is supported here. But this is just the basic um, key features that I'm showing in this video. And there's a lot more to read here on their website. So if you're interested in checking out this and to see if this is something that is uh, going to work for you or if you want to wait then you might want to consider checking this website out to find more of the correct answers and uh, you can read a lot of the information here if you uh, really want to consider getting the XML export from LumaFusion over to Final Cut Pro. So that's what you get from uh, purchasing the XML transfer package so you can take your footage from LumaFusion over to Final Cut Pro on the Max even though there is things which is not uh, kind of following through the connection here just being transferred i highly recommend that you get this not just because you support luma touch but also in the future when they manage to add these different things i'll bet you that this will increase in price so now you can get it for 20 bucks in the future when you have all the extra things here it might be 25, it might be 29, most likely 29. That really leaves you with the question if you should get it now or if you should wait. If you want to wait, you will be able to see what is actually in the next update of this XML package. And you pay those extra 10 bucks, which is not really that much extra. But if you purchase this now, you will kind of have it. So you will get the updates uh, for free, most likely, as we've seen with the other updates that they have done as well. So my conclusion is that uh, for me, I don't see the point of uh, doing this because if I had a Mac, I would rather put the extra money in and uh, um, use Final Cut Pro over the iPad since uh, those uh, the size difference is not really that uh, big between the iPad 12.9 inch and the uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch and uh, also get the keyboard, it's a computer. Yeah, so, so basically for me personally, I, I don't think I'll see myself using this in the future, not even when they are adding it to Premiere Pro, but I might be wrong. I This might be something that I would use um, use a lot. It might be something that I might consider or not, but we will see in the future when they add this to the Premiere Pro. And if I do, if I use this, uh, of course, I will let you know and if it's worth it and, and so, but that is far, far away from now. I believe this is uh, maybe one or two years in the future because everything is kind of Apple related as we know. But let's cut to the end here and my conclusion of this, if you really want it, get it. If you're considering and if you're unsure, then maybe think about it for a few days and uh, and then get it. Maybe check out some other tutorials on people actually putting together some files and, and so on. 9 to 5 Mac has just released a video as well. So you can check out his video. He's actually having the XML transfer. So he is doing that on his channel as well. I'll, I'll make sure to leave his channel down in the comment section below description below uh, and comment section maybe and uh, yeah i think that's the end for um, for this uh, video as well so i really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learn more about what you get for the uh, purchase and what will be transferred over to your uh, macbook and over to final cut pro and if you really want to do that process over again uh, or just to make it in luma fusion and be done with that or just make it on the mac and be done with that it's all up to you what you want to do and uh, um, you decide. So that's the end of this uh, video and as always uh, check out that subscribe button that would be highly appreciated and uh, I see you guys in the next video.